Good morning, Pleasant Grove. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Welcome to our second drive-in uh, service. We uh, have a good turnout this morning. So uh, tune in to your radios at 90.9 if you're in the parking lot, if you're at home. Uh, stand and worship with us as we begin to sing Where I Belong. Let's go. This room may be kind of crazy, but we don't belong here, amen? We have a better place. Sometimes it feels like I'm watching from the outside. Sometimes it feels like I'm breathing. Am I alive? I won't keep searching for answers. Am I here to find? Let me hear you. you are here this morning uh, joining us in the parking lot here and uh, all that stuff. We're glad that you're here on Facebook Live. Um, I, I don't know why I pointed here on Facebook Live because you're not actually there. You're kind of there. So, but uh, we're, we're glad that you're there with us. Um, we, uh, we're thankful that we have the opportunity that we can do this, that we can still come out and, uh, you know, safely meet and uh, do what we need to do, so thanks for coming out. Um, more than anything this morning, I want to uh, say right now, uh, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are out here. Um, we uh, hope that despite all of the craziness and everything that's going on, uh, that you still get to have a great uh, Mother's Day celebration today. So thank you for uh, all that you do as moms and um, uh, the things that we see and all the things that we know that you do that we don't see. So thank you so much for all of that. 
Um, I want to, uh, before I read this verse, uh, I do want to just say um, a couple of things. First of all, um, when you leave today, if you want to drop off your tithe, the buckets are back out there. Um, so you can, there's the slots, you can drop that in. Uh, and then the other thing for uh, all the moms, when you leave, uh, oh, there's, uh, pardon me, all the ladies, there is a, a gift for you. Uh, when you when you go out, just grab out of the basket there. Um, I, I, well, I'm not going to tell you what I think it is because that'll spoil it. So, but there's something in the basket for you out there. So grab that. Uh, that is a gift for you this morning. So again, thank you for uh, uh, for being here and uh, all those things. So if you're on Facebook, um, just a, a quick reminder: give us a like, uh, a thumbs up, um, yeah, heart, whatever you want to do. Don't give us an angry face because that's not nice. Um, but uh, do one of those things just so that we know that you're here with us this morning. And uh, as always, for everybody, if uh, there's anything that you need, shoot us an email, a uh, text message, give us a call, um, shoot us a Facebook message, whatever, whatever uh, you need to do to get in touch with us. And if we can help you in any way, we definitely want to do that. Um, so let me read this verse to you this morning in honor of our mothers, okay? It says, uh, and this is Proverbs 31, 31. It says, honor her for all that her hands have done and let her work. Uh, bring her praise at the city gate. Proverbs 31, 31. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, and we just give you all glory and honor and praise. We are so thankful that uh, we can come to you this morning and that we can be here to celebrate together um, in our cars and in the parking lot uh, and uh, to just enjoy the weather uh, and also just to be able to, to still have the, the ability across the internet to allow our folks to join with us. Uh, Father, again, we are so thankful that we can, um, that we can celebrate our mothers today. And um, we are so thankful that uh, we have them. And um, there are so many things that, that they do, uh, Father, that, that goes unseen. Um, and things that, is, that are seen, that, uh, that we just wanna honor them today for uh, their love and the, the commitment and work uh, to all of our families. Um, Father, today as we worship, be honored and glorified in what we sing, and also, Father, through the preaching and teaching of the word, we ask that you would just uh, be honored and glorified in that as well. We love you, we thank you, and we just give you all glory and honor and praise in the holy and magnificent name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let's continue our song of worship by singing, Because He Lives.
to see you. Um, listen, uh, I know that many of us are, are blessed with, with uh, loving mothers, and, and um, if you're uh, lucky as I am, uh, my mother is here today. So, uh, Mom, I love you, and uh, she has been uh, a, a, a stalwart in my life. She has been um, the, uh, uh, the, the apple of my eye for some time, and um, uh, I love you, Mom, and thank you so much for all you, do, all you do and all you are doing in my life. But also, um, I've been surrounded by uh, good examples of motherhood. Um, many that uh, uh, I can think of in my past have been uh, kind of surrogate mothers. Uh, do you, have you had those in your life as well? So, so, yeah, some women that, that have just uh, come alongside and, and helped you and, and taught you even though they weren't relatives at all. Uh, but also, I have a great example of a loving, loving mother that lives in my own home. Uh, my wife is... Uh, <laughs> my wife has been... Uh, just a, a great example to to me of, of what love is, and um, and she continues to be that in my life. She is a workhorse. Uh, if you're in my home, you know that, right? Uh, she she uh, um, she never rests until she lays her head down on the pillow at night, and then it's a question then because she tells me that her mind goes a million miles an hour even as she's laying down at night. And um, so, um, Lynette, I love you, thank you. Um, also a good example of a mother is my own daughter who um, has uh, gone through some trials recently but continues to um, embrace motherhood. So thank you so much. You know, American poet William Wallace said this, he's credited for saying, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And uh, many of us have had mothers who have had profound uh, impact on us. And there's, I, I believe that there's tangible, tangible proof that moms strengthen legacies. Um, Billy Graham is quoted uh, as saying, only God himself fully appreciates the influence of a Christian mother in the molding of character in her children. Uh, here's some other great quotes that I, that I ran across. George Washington said, All I am I owe to my mother. I attribute all of my success in life to the moral, intellectual, and physical education I received from her. Abraham Lincoln said, All that I am or ever hope to be I owe to my angel mother. Charles Spurgeon said, I cannot tell you how much I owe to the solemn word of my good mother. And more recently, uh, Tim Tebow said this. He said, for, for 25 years, she put her life on hold for me and my siblings. She invested in our lives. We were her number one priority, and nothing else really mattered. That's motherhood. A, a, a focused attention, a focused love. Only loving relationships, I believe, provide lasting legacy and hope. Today, uh, we're celebrating moms, and I want to encourage them in their building of priceless legacies. Moms here today, be a character-forming mother. Even as your children are adults, be a character-forming mother. It's, it, this is also a great reminder to all of us, regardless of age, of the importance of pursuing God's plan for relationships. What, do, what hope do we have that our children will stand by their faith and live by their values? Also, what or who do you trust to impact your children's lives? Who had a profound effect on Jesus Proverbs 22, 6, many of you know that verse. Train up a child in the way that he goes, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The question this morning is, what type of a legacy are you leaving, leaving for your children? What legacy are we leaving? 
We certainly can't hope for perfect children because our children are just like us. They're imperfect people. Uh, where do the, the question I have for you th this morning is, where do your children go for guidance? Do they ever turn to God's word? Do they seek guidance from attentive parents? I believe that parents must continuously pursue relationship with their children. This builds a trust in their children and gives them a, a gives you an opportunity to speak into their lives as they begin to make their own choices. If you don't have that relationship, I encourage you to build a relationship with your child so that when they have they need advice, they don't have to turn to just peers to get that advice. They can they can lean on the experience of a loving mother, a loving father. So let's join with every mom here today in hoping that, one, that our children are more influenced and shaped by their parents and their, uh, the parents and their faith than they are by the world that's around them. Our teens and young adults remain uh, open to our input and continue to be open about the details of their spiritual, emotional, and spiritual life. Let's also hope that our adult children want to be around us as they, as they are adults, and we regularly enjoy being around them. Had a great opportunity last night to be around my mother and all of my children in the house at the same time, grandchildren running around, and uh, it's just a wonderful opportunity to, to spend time with them as, as they are growing and making their own decisions and building their own lives. But we're able to do that because we invested in them in, as a young age. Uh, we invested in them, and we spent time with them, and, and hopefully we can spend a lot more time with them as they mature. Some of us may also champion the, the simple but profound hope that our current family could be a little more emotionally and physically healthy or a little more functional than our own childhood family was. Today, we celebrate moms who pay the price for making a difference in us. What question must we ask teens and single adults in, in today's time? You know, if we were to ask the majority of, of you, uh, would you say that you hope for a fulfilling and God-honoring relationships? Is that what your hope is as a teen or a single adult? The, the, um, the sad thing is, is that many settle for much less than a God-honoring, hope-fulfilling relationship. With the rise of cohabitation, frequency of divorce, children conceived outside of marriage and, and hooking up, it's all the signs that the hope of a God-honoring legacy often gets lost in our world. For the vast majority of us, with few sad exceptions, our moms passed on a legacy of valuing relationships. And so I think that's something to celebrate, that our, that our mothers have passed on a legacy of hope. For many of us, we enjoyed a legacy of faith from our moms, so that's something to celebrate. Is your hope of fulfillment being found in fun activities, young people, or hanging out with peers, or maybe the last video game? Lessons from the psalmist give us wisdom about where to ground our hopes and confidence for the future. Successful moms have followed this wisdom, and, and each of us can benefit from it. Let's read what many refer to as the home-building psalm. Turn in your Bibles this morning to Psalm 127. If you have them with you, I hope you do. Psalm 127. That's the uh, passage we're going to focus on today, verses 1 through 3. And this is known as the home-building psalm. It says this in verse 1, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the, guard, the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. It, it is vain for you to rise up early, to retire late, to eat the bread of painful labors. For he who gives to his beloved even 
in his sleep. Behold, children are a gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. First of all, uh, let me say this. The Lord hope, uh, offers hope for a lasting legacy. Jesus himself offers hope for a lasting legacy. The Lord, I believe, is in the home building business. He builds heavenly homes. He builds church homes. Aren't you glad this is your church home? But he also builds earthly homes. Dads, let me talk to you for a, sitter, uh, for a second. Consider God's wisdom in Ephesians 5.25. It says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. In Ephesians 6.4, it says, Do not provoke or exasperate your children. Dads, pay close attention that relationships are important. Moms, let me ask you this. Consider God's wisdom. Proverbs 31, 27 says she looks well to the ways of her household. Ephesians 5, 33 says let the wife see that she respects her husband. If you build your house around the principles of God's word, your house will be a home of hope. Teenagers and singles, consider the encouragement of 2 Timothy 2, 22. It says, run away from youthful indulgence. Run after mature righteousness, faith, love, peace. Joining those who are in honest and serious prayer before God. Our home building song, Psalm 127, reminds us that there are only two kinds of homes being built. Those the Lord builds, and then those that are being built in vain. Let me ask you this morning, what is your home? One of the two, is it a home that the Lord builds or is it a home that is being built in vain? What does that mean? It means that there's, there's the homes and families are built with emptiness in their midst. Also, we celebrate moms today as they seek to build their legacy as God directs. The Lord is the one who builds and guards our homes. Countless enemies are trying to destroy God-honoring relationships and God-honoring homes. The Lord is our only true hope for faithfulness. Remember King David? He was named a, a man after God's own heart. And, and yet we read that he betrayed uh, his, uh, of his betrayal with uh, Bathsheba trying to destroy the home. Remember Abraham, the Old Testament patriarch. Abraham was named the friend of God, yet he failed to even protect his wife, Sarah, when life's pressures came, came closing in. He chose instead to lie and to take the easy way out. Allowing the Lord to build and guard our home means more than just a token acknowledgement of him or acknowledgement of his principles. It requires a commitment to live according to God's word, God's blueprint of building a home. Relationships are our number one hope of legacy. And the Bible is God's blueprint for relationships. God lets us know, that, know how to have a, a blessed marriage, a blessed family, blessed friendships, Parts of his plans, part of the blueprint is about, number one, communicating in gentleness and truth. Also, fess up when someone messes up. Also, celebrate when someone is rejoicing. And provide comfort when someone is hurting. All of these are found in God's word. And they're great uh, structures for the home. People are God's priority. And so people should be your priority as well. Remember in Psalm 127 too, it said, it is vain to rise up early and to retire late. Uh, the barrenness and emptiness of a busy life is, is stolen much of, uh, has stolen much of the closeness from relationships and families today. 
friends or family are absorbed by their smartphones and frantic carpools or extracurricular activities and never-ending pursuit of material things. And all of that takes an unhealthy toll on relationships. Life fulfillment and legacy are never ultimately found in what we acquire. Did y'all hear that? Life fulfilling, fulfillment and legacy are never ultimately found in what we, we acquire, nor what we accomplish, nor what we achieve. They're only found in, a love, in the loving intimacy with God and with those that are entrusted to us. Relationships that, that the Lord builds are those where people are the priority. Not things, not accomplishments, not achievements. People are the priority. As we honor moms today and in the coming days, let's give priority to the simplicity of loving others. Dads, teens, young adults, could, could you take the initiative this week to make a quick phone call or a, to shoot a short text to just communicate to your mother, I was thinking about you. I miss seeing you. And I look forward to seeing you again. Just take a quick second and send a message or call them. You might be amazed at how a few minutes of thoughtful initiative can deepen a relationship. Family members, could you develop a habit of giving first to one another before you think about yourself? Make your family a priority. Not work, not friends, not tasks on your, on your to-do list, but make your family a priority. This week, why don't you look for ways to share words of encouragement and appreciation for one another, offering comfort, offering support in your own family. Start each day with the attitude of, who in my family can I give to today? Married couples, do you have a time when you can just talk? Some call it maybe a family meeting or a marriage staff meeting. But do you have a time where you can just talk about things that are going on and, and life in general, the direction of life, direction of children? This is the time where you can plan your next date night or discuss marriage and family goals or communicate about parenting challenges. So parents, try designating a family night this week. I know that we've been with family behind isolation for some time. And sometimes we can even get lost in that, in our own rooms. We can, we can isolate ourselves. Make your family a priority. This is a time when you can spend dedicated time with your family like no other. How about one night, and, and I know y'all are gonna probably run over me. Uh, don't, don't, don't start your cars and head this way, but how about agreeing to one night have zero electronics night? Zero electronics night. <laughs> My, my daughter just started her car. <laughs> but children, listen, children are our hope-filled legacy. We can have a fresh vision for hope-filled children. What would seeing children who are filled with hope look like? Well, this would mean that our children wouldn't be filled with self-centeredness, wouldn't be filled with arrogant pride or self-condemnation but instead they'd be they would be filled with a a hope from the lord our children's faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen moms and dads we cannot make our children receive our faith 
Each child must experience his or her, her own faith journey. But we can instill in our children the hope that we have in our, our own Lord and our own Savior. And this hope can blossom into a child's personal faith. This is an incredible opportunity we have as parents. You have an incredible opportunity to read God's word and structure your home by God's blueprint. Build a home of legacy. We have another reason for celebrating moms whose hope is in the Lord. Be sure to, to, to express your gratitude often today. Look around and imagine each child as an extravagant gift, as this psalm says. You, each child in your home, whether small or whether now an adult, is an extravagant gift, says Psalm 127. He's laid before us packages with brightly colored paper, uniquely tied ribbons and beautiful bows. Parents, if you have more than one child in your family, imagine each gift and how he or she is uniquely packaged and displayed. Here's an important challenge and a valuable opportunity to instill hope in, in your preciously wrapped gifts. The question you need to face is, have you slowed down long enough to turn aside and enter their world? But when you do that, you unwrap each gift because you get you get begin to to truly know them. Have you stopped and noticed and admired the special way in which each child is wired? Have you stopped and noticed and admired each of their personalities, each of their giftedness, each of their own characters? Faithful moms and dads initiate blessing each child with a gift and that's a gift of affirmation knowing that God has uniquely designed them for a specific purpose and if you as a mother as a father can help your child know that they were uniquely formed for God's purpose you have successfully built that child you need to reassure their fears be aware of of, of a children's insecurities and, and, and fears. Moms and dads, do you, do you know about the things that make them nervous and the situations that cause them anxiety? Help them work through that. Help them to address that. We need to practice perfect reassuring love which casts out all fear according to 1 John 4, 18 and 19. We need to help our children discover their dreams. But it's impossible for you to help your child discover their dreams if you don't first know their dreams. Do you know your child well enough to know their dreams? Discover the paths where their imaginations take them and then join them in their dream. You need to celebrate the strengths of your children. Be close enough to see each child's character strengths. Be attentive enough to verbalize those. And let them know that you are good at this. You are great at this. Help them to pursue those, those strengths. Have one-on-one -on -one conversations with them in front of other people. We also... Mothers, you need to teach your children to prioritize confessions. When they do wrong, help them to understand that apology is completely okay. You're an example of that. Ironically, a parent or another, another adult's apology sows some, some of the best seeds of hope into a young life. Uh, when you lose your patience with your child, I wonder if you ever say, I'm sorry that I'm impatient today. 
When you break a promise, do you ever say, I was wrong not to keep my promise? These humble admonitions of wrong give, give a child hope that they can admit wrong themselves. They can make amends for their own imperfections. When they make a mistake, they can fully confess that mistake and accept that mistake and move on. We need to set aside time individually. Quality time with a child instills hope in them. When a child senses that, that mom or dad or a, another significant adult sets aside special time just for them, a child's worth is affirmed in that. A sense of hope is increased. So when was the last time you enjoyed a fun time alone with your son or your daughter doing something that they wanted to do, not that you wanted to do? If it's been too long, you might reignite their hope with words like, Son, it's been too long since you and I had some fun together. Let's make some plans to just hang out and do whatever you choose to do. Why is this simple action such a good idea? Well, Jesus is a power example of leaving his world heaven and enter into our world he showed that he cared because he came into our lives he came into our world he took initiative to set aside time for us he didn't just look out for his own interests Jesus looked out to the interests of others Philippians 2 4 through 8 as parents and those who care about children we have a similar opportunity to think more highly of someone else. Someone else in our own household. Think more highly of our children as we leave the busyness of our adult world and enter into the world of your child. So, moms, dads, go outside and kick a ball. Play with Play-Doh. Let them beat you at their video game. Have a tea party. Listen to a terrible drum solo. Draw together. Read together. Go get a cup of coffee together. Enter into your child's world and enjoy the gifts from the Lord and pass on hope in the process. Remember Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds a home, that home is built in vain. Remember, this day is an occasion to celebrate moms who have given their time, their attention, and their care and love to their children. That we might have life in this world more abundantly. But there is an ultimate hope that gives us more abundant life as well. There's a love like no other that gives us hope in the midst of conflict. And that is the hope that's given to us in Jesus Christ. Pass on the legacy of hope in Christ to your children. Listen, there's nothing better than a parent who leads their children to Christ. That's, that's a memory that you will cherish for a lifetime. Help them know who Jesus is. Show them who Christ is. Let them know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Help them know that true and lasting hope is only found in Christ. Maybe you're here or maybe you're listening and you didn't have a parent to instill those values in you. It's not too late to accept those values, to accept that word. Jesus loves you. He loves you today. And you have an opportunity today to accept a love 
like you've never known in him. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Today, you can have the hope of Christ. And you can begin building your home on the blueprint of God's word. Psalm 127 is a great place to start if you haven't started. Psalm 127, 1 through 3 that we read. Look at that and realize that you may be building your home in vain if you're not giving them the hope of Christ. And so, Mom and Dad, I want to invite you to Christ today. I want to invite you to put your faith and trust in Him and then begin investing in your children's lives. Because each child, as this psalm says, is a precious gift given to you by God. You have a responsibility to instill hope and love in your children. Moms, thank you for what you've done in the past. Thank you for what you will do in the future. Thank you for loving us when we were unlovable. That's what moms do. And guess what? That's what Jesus does. He loves you even when you're unlovable. When you do things outside of your character, He continues to love. He continues to make you a priority. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love someone else as yourself. That's what mothers should do. I want to invite you today, if you are listening online, if you're here in the parking lot, you can accept Christ right there where you are and begin to build a home by God's blueprint. Would you join me in prayer? Father God, I thank you so much for loving us first. Your word tells us that even while we are unlovable, while we were yet sinners, it says, Christ died for us. Lord, I pray today that if there's someone within the sound of my voice that needs Christ in their life, that needs to begin to build their home under the blueprint of God's Word, that they would begin today. Father, would you help them to turn to you and to trust in you today? If you're here or if you're listening online, you can trust him by simply confessing to him. Number one, that you believe that Christ died for your sins. But also confessing the fact that you don't have it all together and that you've messed up and that you've sinned. And God, I pray that you would forgive me is all you need to say. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and life. Begin to clean me up. Clean up my thoughts. Give me a hope. A lasting hope. Forevermore. Lord, I confess to you. If you just pray that, Lord, I confess to you that Jesus, that I believe that Jesus died for me. And that he was raised again. If you would just pray that. You could begin a new life in Christ. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for my mother. I thank you for our mothers. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. I love each of you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
are out there if you need to uh, put your offering in as you go and um, I'm still in a little bit of Tim's thunder this morning because I wanted to make sure to tell you that now you need to go and be the church. Okay. 